Hi, my name is Atif Kamal. This is my fourth video on logic and reasoning and my first video on propositions. Below you'll find my contact info. You can send any questions, comments, and feedback to kautif at gmail.com. You can check out my website which has links to other videos on logic and reasoning as well as uh, supplementary exercises. It also has a forum for you to leave questions and comments for myself or the other viewers to answer. There's also a link to a chat room um, for you to discuss content with myself or other viewers um, while or while not watching the videos. I also leave my office hours available to you to know when I'm available to discuss content live either through the uh, link to the chat room on the website or via Skype. Um, and um, let's see what else. Oh, and also I leave information about how to earn certificates by completing the supplementary exercises. Okay, having said that, let's move on to the components of propositions. Okay, for any given proposition or attempted statement of truth, you will have a subject, verb, and a predicate. It is not possible to make a proposition, to make a statement of truth without a, th without a subject, verb, and a predicate. Also, um, so long as the proposition has terms which are categories like schools or public, and not single individuals like Atif, uh, University of California, Berkeley, or Taco Bell, you need to express the extent to which the predicate is affirmed or denied of the subject. So that's why you need to state the quantity like all, no, or some. Okay, Those are all necessary components of a proposition. And now I will give you an example. Okay, so um, my guess is that most of my viewers know what the subject, the verb, and the predicate is. So I'm not going to really focus on that. What I'm going to focus on is the quantity and the quality of a proposition. I think fewer will be familiar with what I mean by those uh, terms. For the first proposition you have, all schools are public, is basically saying every school um, falls under the category public, schools um, entirely falls the category schools entirely falls under the category public. Um, that first proposition is an affirmation, so the first proposition has a positive quality. For the second proposition, uh, no schools are public. It's entirely excluding the category schools from the category public. It's saying there's not a single school which falls under the category public. Because it is excluding the category schools from the category public, um, that second proposition has a negative quality. Now, because the first and second proposition are either fully affirming or denying the predicate of the subject, both of those propositions would um, have what's called a universal quantity. Now, for the third proposition, uh, some schools are public. It's saying that the category schools um, partially falls under the category public. It's saying at least one school falls under the category public. Because the third proposition is making an affirmation, the third proposition has a positive quality. For the fourth and last proposition, uh, some schools are not public. It's saying that schools the category schools is partially excluded from the category public. It's saying there is at least one school which does not fall under the category public. Okay. Now here's um, there's some terms below uh, or some words below. You try, and uh, they're not in any particular order. You have to decide whether they go in the subject, verb, and predicate, and then. For each positive universal, negative universal, positive particular, negative particular, you have to make the propositions accordingly. Um, I'll give you a moment to do that. 
If you need more time, you can pause the video. Otherwise, I'm going to move on to the answers. Okay, so the first proposition, all terrorists have facial hair, it's saying the category terrorist um, fully falls under the category facial hair. I'm saying every single terrorist has facial hair. For the second proposition, no terrorists have facial hair. It's entirely excluding uh, the category terrorists from uh, people that have facial hair. It's saying there's not a single terrorist that falls under the category high facial hair. Uh, for the third proposition, it's saying some terrorists have facial hair. It's saying there's at least one terrorist which falls under the category of facial hair, having facial hair. For the last proposition, it's saying um, there's at least one terrorist which does not have facial hair. Same. Um, terrorist is partially excluded from the category uh, have facial hair. Okay, and now here is an idea for you to get some extended practice. Um, go to books.google.com, find a book that interests you, um, if it's necessary to find an interesting book for you. Find a subject, verb, and a predicate. It can be any subject, verb, and predicate. And then be creative. Make your own uh, positive, universal, and particular propositions as well as your own negative, universal, and particular propositions. Okay, and then next up, um, I'll show you examples of contradictory propositions, and by showing you, I'll also analyze uh, the components of propositions which contradict each other. And you have that to look forward to. And thank you for watching.